minutes. Okay. I was talking for about a whole five minutes and realized my camera wasn't on. Oh, great. Okay. So, <laughs> I start out with a pot of water. Um, I, I usually get like um, spring water in a gallon because you want your soup to be as healthy as possible. I've already put it in here. Sorry, I forgot to show you that. Um, so, I this is like... Um, pretty much a gallon of like natural spring water that I bought from the grocery store. Um, I have my burner on medium high. Um, you can make your chicken stock semi from scratch, meaning that you can go buy chicken broth, you know. Um, I tend to get this kind if I don't make it from scratch. Um, and if you notice, this is low sodium because we don't want anything that has a bunch of sodium in it because we're going to put in our own salt. We're going to put in put in the good salt so you know we don't want someone else's type of salt so um, if you do start out with a, um, a chicken broth that's already made I would suggest getting something like this and I got this at the grocery store regular grocery store so no health food store thing here so you can find this in the regular grocery store and um, I, if you have hypertension high blood pressure I would definitely try to get things that are low sodium because you're gonna put your own salt in things and you're gonna put the right salt in so um, so I'm starting with a pot of water. Um, this is about, uh, I'll say about a gallon, almost a whole gallon I poured in there. So, um, and I have some chicken here. I have ch whole chicken legs. So it's like the thigh and the leg together. Um, you can use a whole chicken if you want it or whatever. I would just make sure you get a chicken that doesn't have um, any hormones or antibiotics or anything like that because once you start putting meat into into water and making a soup out of it and it, it's and if it's full of hormones it's going to be all in your soup and it's in your body and we don't want that because the body is a temple right okay so I washed my chicken already so I if you have any type of meat as long as it's not ground meat you really should be washing it because my next door neighbor <laughs> and I did this when my mother started teaching me how to cook anyway so um I did this when um she started teaching me how to cook when I was around like uh, 11 or 12 years old so I've always washed you know um ribs chicken whatever as long as it's not ground meat I, I would wash it and so now I'm going to um add my salt here this is a uh, Celtic sea salt I'm only going to put a little bit only because I wanted to start getting the flavors in the chicken and stuff so I'm just gonna grab about that much for right now and remember this salt is full of all the minerals that the body needs and this is excellent for your blood pressure because high blood pressure is really a lack of minerals it's either a lack of calcium potassium magnesium manganese things like that and all those types of um, minerals are in this salt this particular type of salt so now I'm going to do something that's a little strange to people. I'm going to add probably about a tablespoon of apple cider vinegar. And the reason why is because I want this vin anything acidic. You could use lemons, but lemon seems to change the flavor of things for me when you when you squeeze it in soup or mayonnaise or something like that. And I make raw I make my own mayonnaise. That's going to be another another video I'm going to do. So, um but I I really think that you know I like this better because it doesn't have a strange flavor I think it after the chicken is cooking for a while kind of gets boiled off so um, I'm gonna put a little bit of um, apple cider vinegar in here and the reason why is because I want this the acidity from the vinegar to leach out the minerals from the chicken so that's why you always want to start with an organic chicken um, any type of meat make it sure it's organic no, no hormones nitrates things like that so start that way you know so because it's going to your body you want it to be as healthy as possible so um, I'm gonna let this cook until the meat is pretty much done you know um, and then pull it out and, and and break it apart and then start adding my vegetables that's why it takes me a while I kind of do it in stages so this is stage one so I'm gonna cook the chicken for probably about an hour um, in this pot of water to make sure that it's completely done so stay tuned and I'll be back and I'll show you the next step thanks okay so the chicken's been cooking for about an hour in the, in the um, water here so what, what I'm gonna do now is just uh, remove the entire the chicken from the pot and put it in a bowl and set it aside because um, I'm going to shred it later 
I'm not going to do all this chicken because I think it's a little bit too much meat for the soup. But I'll probably do like one or two of these. Not all three of them. Um, there's like three leg quarters here. So, yeah. So, as you can see, the chicken is done. Looks kind of plain, but we're going to fix that with some seasonings. Um, so, now I'm going to add seasoning and stay tuned. Okay, so... If you need to add more water because it kind of boiled out from cooking your chicken, just add a little bit more water. Or you can add um, some chicken broth if you have it. Now would be the perfect time for that. But um, if you don't have chicken broth and you're making your broth completely from scratch like I am, you can just add a little bit more water to it. Okay, so I'm going to start adding my seasonings now. Here I have uh, garlic powder. This is the dehydrated garlic that I use all the time. Uh, I'm going to probably use about three small soup spoons of this in here. And um, I'm also going to use a little bit of granulated garlic. And the reason why I'm using so much garlic, because garlic is great for colds and flus, like I said in another video, it's uh, antiviral, antibacterial, um, and also um, because of the allicin in garlic, that's uh, that's a component that you find in onions and stuff like that. Um, it's very great. It's very good for your blood pressure. So it's good at lowering that. So I'm gonna add a little bit more salt, the Celtic sea salt, because of the minerals in it. And uh, I'm going to add some black pepper. Now, I don't really talk about black pepper that much because I, you know, I would say, oh, because I like the taste of black pepper. I, I do. I like the taste of it. Um, I like the flavor. But this also helps with blood pressure, too, because um, because of the, the spice in pepper, like any pepper, like this pepper here, this is a, uh, this is a scotch bonnet pepper. And I hope you guys can see it because my lighting's not so great. Um this these little suckers are really hot um and they're awesome for blood pressure they're kind of like cayenne pepper because what it does is kind of opens up your arteries and let the blood flow um blood flow through a lot smoother so and therefore it kind of it lowers your blood pressure it doesn't kind of it does it does lower your blood pressure so i'll add this in last i usually add the whole peppers in last because i have to taste the soup make sure it's not too spicy so yeah, so we're going to do that. The black pepper for right now, the salt, the garlic. Um, I'm also going to add, start adding some parsley. I have dried parsley leaves here. I ran out of the dehydrated kind that my mom usually makes for me because I go through parsley like crazy. I put it in hamburger meat and everything, So, which I don't use hamburger. I use turkey meat for hamburgers, but that's another video. <laughs> so I'm going to add some parsley in here. Uh, I'm going to kind of paste the parsley, meaning I'm not going to just grab handfuls of it and put it in because actually if you use too much parsley, it can take, things can taste a little bitter. So I don't want it to get too bitter. So for right now, I'm just going to do a couple pinches pinches of parsley and let's see what else um i'm gonna use a little bit of um all pepper i'm sorry all purpose seasoning salt um i did get this from the health food store doesn't have any um anti-clumping agents or anything in it it's just sea salt it's just a uh, sea salt paprika um celery seed oregano and a, a few other things so um, I'm just going to add a little bit of this because I've already had salt in it. I've already added the salt, but I, I kind of want to make sure that this doesn't have a watery flavor. So, um, add that in there. Next, I'm going to start adding my vegetables like my potatoes, the yams, and the carrots because they take a little bit longer to cook. So, stay tuned. Okay, so, um, while, um, I have my, my, um, broth still kind of simmering I'm going to start cutting up my vegetables I got a purple onion here red onion I have about six or seven small red potatoes they're also called rose potatoes um, and I do have um, a yam here so um, 
I'm chopping up one of them. So what I did was I, I washed my potatoes. Because, you know, guys, if you're going to the store and you're picking up produce and, and meat and stuff, especially produce that's been, that's exposed where everybody's picking through it and, you know, they're looking for whichever one they want or whatever. Everyone's been sneezing, coughing, touching <laughs> their hands or whatever. Make sure you wash your produce when you get home and before you you cook in and eat it um you know so wash wash whatever you can wash your food and I got a I got flack for that on one of my videos the kitchen sink chicken and uh, someone said I was being snobby because I washed the chicken and I'm thinking don't everybody wash their chicken I I don't know why that would be snobby but you know I'm I'm I, this is what I do that's what I've been taught by my 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 mother when she was teaching me how to cook so um, I just pass that on I feel like if you can if you can limit um, getting sick from catching germs that way then why not do it you know and if you can wash off some of the solution that's on food like meats and stuff why not do that I mean try to make your meal as healthy as possible there's nothing snobby about that so you know this was, that was odd I don't know so um, with that being said please wash your food it, it's a bit healthier so and as you guys know I like things in bite-sized pieces I got a thing about that I don't like really huge hunks of food so I'm just going to chop up um, all of my vegetables here in small pieces and then add them to the soup because seeing how they're potatoes they're going to take a while to cook and I'll also add my carrots and stuff so um, Again, I've already washed my potatoes off, so I'm just going through and, and just, you know, cutting them in small pieces. See what I like. I like this size. That works for me. And uh, I will be putting those into the soup. So, I want to talk about potatoes for a minute. Um, potatoes are an excellent healthy food, especially if you get organic potatoes. And these are organic potatoes, so there's... No pesticides or anything on there, so they say. But you know, like I said before, how are you gonna know that? You know, but you have to trust what they say unless you're growing it yourself. And I'm in a place where I can't grow things in my backyard, so because um, it's too small. And so uh, potatoes are very good, are very high in quite a few vitamins, especially vitamin B, B6, excellent. You know, they contain a lot of uh, vitamin uh, B6. They're high in vitamin C. Um, also, vitamin A, especially sweet potatoes, um, especially if you leave the skin on. Very high in vitamin C, vitamin A, and vitamin B6, which, you know, contrary to the popular belief out there, for those of you who have type 2 diabetes, um, Sweet potatoes are, are very good for that. Now, I wouldn't have a diet just on sweet potatoes because, again, it still is a starch, especially this the inside part of the potato. It, it still is a starch. Uh, most of the vitamins and minerals are, are in the skin. The, the meat of, of the potato is starch and fiber. Uh, fiber is great for you, uh, natural fiber. So, um, like I said, if you have type 2 diabetes, I would still uh, paste pace your readings and um, make sure you're not having too much sugar in your system before you start eating um, the uh, potatoes. That's yeah, that's um, sweet potatoes or or any other type of potato. But potatoes are very good for um, diabetes <laughs> type 2. Um, again, I'm not a doctor, this, so go out and do your own research. Don't take what I say, you know, in stone. So, um, go out and do your own research because this is your health, you know. You got to know what help, what works for you. So, but again, they're very high in vitamin C, vitamin A, uh, vitamin B6. Um, and they're loaded with potassium. And potassium is exactly what you need when you have hypertension, when you have high blood pressure. You need potassium calcium magnesium uh, all of those and manganese and a few other things so um, a few other minerals so definitely and I don't like the way that looks so I'm gonna take it off I have a thing about food not looking perfect <laughs> so uh, yeah so definitely if you can get potatoes in your in your diet that's a great way to get uh, quite a few minerals um, and some vitamins but make sure you leave the skin on so that's um, that's what I know about potatoes. Um, 
Now these potatoes I'm cutting up here, these are red potatoes. They're also known as uh, rose potatoes. And um, these are very high in vitamin B complex. Now what is vitamin B complex? Vitamin B complex is usually, not usually, what it is, it's the, it's, um, it's, B, it's all the B vitamins. Um, this is the one. I take these. And I, and I think if you, I'm not endorsing this company or anything. I'm just showing you what I take. So if you are taking any type of, any type of medication of any kind, <laughs> I don't care what you're taking it for, make sure you're taking some B complex because medication, especially hypertension, high blood pressure medication, will zap the heck out of your body of minerals and vitamin B complex. It will take out the vitamin B6, the B12, the, the B2, the B3, all of it. And that's a complex B2, B6, B12. That's a complex. That's all the B vitamins in one pill. So you definitely, definitely, definitely want to take a vitamin B complex when you are on um, any type of medication of any kind. Or if you drink alcohol on a regular basis, definitely, and smoking, definitely want to take a, a B complex pill along with vitamin C because like I said they get completely zapped out of your system when you take it and then when you have a lack of B vitamins it leads to other things uh, other health issues so you know you have dark circles under your eyes that that's an indication it's also an indication of low magnesium um, another thing um, since I mentioned magnesium again, uh, magnesium is absolutely important for like the muscles in your body. What that does, it actually um, relaxes muscles in your body. Um, so your heart's a muscle, so it definitely needs um, magnesium. So I would definitely try to get that in your system. Like I said, um, potatoes, uh, um, even onions has a little bit of magnesium um, any green vegetables like spinach or kale or anything like that loaded with magnesium besides uh, vitamin A and vitamin K and well, I'll talk about vitamin K a little bit later uh, so yeah definitely try to get that in your in your body um, because when you have a deficiency in those things definitely causes problems uh, other types of health health issues and they've they found there's been a study that when you are low in magnesium, um, people who are low in magnesium, a lot of times they have high blood pressure. So uh, and and you, uh, they're also low in potassium. So make sure you get those types of uh, the foods that are loaded with that. Make sure you get it in your body um, as much as you can. So okay, so I've I've cut up my potatoes here. I'm going to cut up a little bit more onion and then I'm going to add my carrots which is loaded with vitamin A and some other things. I'm going to put those into the, um, the broth and we're going to let those cook down and get soft so stay tuned. Okay so I'm going to add my um, onions and garlic. I took two medium sized garlics and just chopped them up and so I'm just going to add that into the broth and I'm going to add the onions to the broth. This is going to give it a nice flavor and besides um, some health benefits. Now um, I'm going to add my, my sweet potato and my uh, red potato. Now, the more you put in here, the water's going to start rising, so I just kind of <laughs> put it in little by little and see how far the water's going to rise up. Okay, so this is just about all of it. So I cut up, again, I cut up... Um, Actually, I just used one yam, oops, one sweet potato, and uh, cut up about five, I'm sorry, about six red potatoes. So this is going to make a nice hearty soup. And you know, right about this time, you can start tasting 
your broth to see if it needs more salt, if it needs more pepper or any other type of seasonings. So I did taste it earlier and it needs some more salt. Of course the salt that has all the minerals in it. So we definitely want this broth to be like a mineral broth. Okay. So we got that going. So while this is cooking, I'm going to let it cook uh, until it, you know, the potatoes start getting soft. Um, I'm going to also add some carrots. These are uh, organic baby carrots. And I got them from the health food store, but I've also seen them at the regular grocery store. So you can get that or organic baby carrots at the um, regular grocery store. So I'm just going to kind of put in however much I want because we got a lot of stuff going on in here. I mean, we got potatoes, we got uh, red potatoes, uh, sweet potato, garlic, onions, and we're going to add spinach. Then we're going to be adding cabbage also and chicken. So like I said, this is a meal with all by itself. Um, so I'm good with that. I used about probably almost half the bag on this. And this is, um, how big is this? This is about a two pound bag of baby carrots. So yeah, this is, that's about all I use on that. So I'm going to season it up a little bit more. I think I needed some more seasoning besides salt. So I'm adding my pepper. Um, I'm going to add some more even though I added the whole garlic, I'm going to add some more garlic powder because this is going to be a strong cold and flu fighter also. Not just something that's going to give our body minerals and nourishment and help with inflammation and all. So um, it's also going to be a good broth, a good meal to help with uh, any type of colds or flus and stuff like that. Also, I will be adding turmeric to this. That's something you can do or not do. It depends upon you. Uh, I will be adding the spiced turmeric because it is an anti-inflammatory and it is great for um, helping in boosting your immune system. So I will add a little bit to that um, later on when all my potatoes, uh oh, camera's trying to move on me, <laughs> when all of my potatoes and carrots and stuff get softer. So what I'm going to do now is um, shred the chicken and I'll show you that. So stay tuned. Okay, so um, I did go ahead and shred up my chicken. I just did a, a couple couple of leg quarters um, I still have one whole one left and because I wanted to show you because I had to charge my battery <laughs> so okay so what I do is with the cooked chicken I just remove the skin from the cooked chicken because we don't want that in our soup you know so then I take the meat and just kind of break it apart and put it in the bowl as I hope you guys saw that I, I removed the, the skin from the chicken I don't want that in the soup so, and just break it apart and put it in a bowl and just make sure it's all shredded up and chopped up and then um, take my knife and just kind of go through and chop it into smaller little pieces that I like okay all right so I think that's enough chicken. It's probably a little bit too much because there's going to be so much in this soup. There's no need to have a bunch of meat. Okay, so that I set that aside. And let me clean up this mess really quick because the next thing I'm going to do is chop up my um, cabbage. So after I chop up the cabbage, I am going to Go ahead and put that the chopped cabbage um, into the soup. Um, I, I'm showing you the carrot right now because I wanted to show you how it's tender. I just picked this out of the the cooking pot, so this is how I know that it's it's ready. It's ready. I mean, it's so easy to slice through, and you know they're very soft. So um, the veggies are ready. The potatoes are soft. The carrots are soft. So it's it's ready to go. Put that back in the pot. Okay. So with this, this is this is organic cabbage. I got it from the health food store. I did uh, rinse it off at the top. 
uh, the top layer and uh, I went through and pulled off um, the top layer just to make sure you know that I'm getting down to the cleaner part so I just pulled off the top layer because it comes off in layers like this and that's all I did okay so I'm going to um, take the cabbage and cut it in half down the middle although I probably should cut the bottom part off first <laughs> sorry I'm kind of um, discombobulated right now my mom just found out someone is stealing content from her YouTube channel and putting it on a bogus website so yeah we just had a long conversation about that anyway so break it apart and uh, I'm gonna take half of this and just start cutting it in like little wedges Now, cabbage is a cruci cruciferous vegetable, and it is great for uh, providing your system with sulfur, natural sulfur. So, I know some people take MSM pills and stuff like that. Well, this is this is natural MSM right here. So, if you're having an issue with hair and nails, stuff like that, this is definitely the vegetable to eat. So going to pull it apart a little bit um, I probably won't use all of this but you know it's going to kind of cook down so it's okay if it's kind of like in big pieces right now so now what I'm going to do is take you over to the pot and we're going to put with the um, the leftover veggies into the pot and the reason why I'm doing this last is because it doesn't take very long for this to cook so this is like the last phase and um, so I usually add this type of stuff in last okay stay tuned okay so as you can see I used about um, a little bit more than half of this pepper and I chopped it up into little small pieces and that's good enough for me and I'm gonna just pop it in the soup here and if I want a little bit more spicier I will add cayenne pepper so but for right now I'll wait and see like a, a day or two from now <laughs> because like I said the pepper is going to make this even a little bit more as it's the longer it sits the hotter it would get so it is looking really nice potatoes are kind of down at the bottom so I'm just going to do a little ladle full so you can kind of see how much it, food is in here. I mean, we've got chicken, carrots, sweet potatoes, red potatoes, cabbage, spinach, parsley. And, and remember, parsley is, is a great natural diuretic. So um, definitely great for that. So we got vitamins, minerals, uh, fiber, all the things that your body is going to need to stay healthy and help with blood pressure issues. So, and even some type 2 diabetic issues too. So, you know, I'm going to let I'm going to let this cook for about another 10-15 minutes cuz I really want that um, cabbage to be to be done and tender. And uh, I'm going to bowl it up and let you have a look at it and stay tuned. Okay? So, here is our super soup. Um, so it's got um, chicken, potatoes, cabbage, carrots, parsley, onions, garlic, um, and a broth that was all made from scratch. Um, so it's loaded with vitamins, minerals, and protein and fiber. So now you know, now you know why I call it a super soup. Um, this soup is fantastic you really don't need any bread or anything with it because it's it's filled with so much food so much stuff in it you, you don't need anything you know and the carrots and it, it's it's awesome I usually make this in the winter um, and it's really good it lasts for a few days 
because I make such a big pot of it. Um, I take it to work. I have it for lunch. Sometimes I have it for breakfast. You know, <laughs> I have it a lot. So um, it's full of minerals. That and, and like I said earlier, that is one of the uh, major problems with people with hypertension. Um, they don't. They lack a lot of minerals. So what you get here is the potatoes and the sweet potatoes, which is which is full of um, vitamin B complex, <laughs> and um, it has um, potassium, it has vitamin C, it has, uh, it even has copper, um, it's very high in magnesium, um, so yeah, and then I want to talk about magnesium for a second. Now one way to know that you are low in magnesium is one, you have high blood pressure, or two, you have diabetes, type 2 diabetes, that's usually one of the big indications that you are lacking magnesium, you may be eating, getting magnesium in your food, but you might not be digesting it or absorbing it. Um, so, um, some of the symptoms when you have low, uh, when you're very deficient in magnesium, sometimes you can have like eyelid twitches. You know, if all of a sudden your your eyelid twitches out of the blue. That that's one of them. Um, muscle cramps, like you get cramps in your calves or something. Usually it happens at night. I don't know why. I used to get that, but I haven't had that in a long time. Um, PMS, insomnia. You're always tired, or you have um, abnormal heart rhythm. You know your heart kind of beats out of sync or, or uh, palpitates pal palpitates a lot. <laughs> so that's an indication that you know you need more potassium and magnesium so and the thing about potassium potassium actually regulates the um, sodium and fluid in your body so you know um, you got to get a lot of potassium in your body so that comes from bananas um, potatoes uh, you guys try it it is absolutely delicious it is filling um, satisfying full of vitamins minerals fiber protein everything is all in this soup so um, please try it. Let me know how you like it. And as usual, I'm, I'm going to always state this. Try and make every meal as healthy as possible because your body is a temple. Um, we want to keep the temple working and clean, all the pipes working and running. So um, we can always do that through food and exercise. So please try it and let me know how you like it. Thanks, guys.